Harpoon fishing in Black Desert, is it worth it? And can you earn as much as regular fishing? The answer is, well, yes. In fact, depending on your luck, you can actually earn more than with regular fishing, in the same amount of time. In order to go harpoon fishing, you're going to need two things. The first thing you need is to find out what your fishing skill level is. You can't even go harpoon fishing unless your skill level is at professional 5, in which the harpoon is inequipable until that point. And the second thing you need is a sailboat or better. Driving a rowboat or a raft will actually not allow you to go harpoon fishing. You will be able to equip the harpoon, but it won't let you cast it. In this video, I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know, or at least everything that I know, about harpoon fishing, and a really good place for you to start. Now, unlike regular fishing, using a harpoon doesn't allow you to auto-fish, so allocating time is pretty important. I usually make it a point to go out and do multiple things at once so that I'm not wasting my time out on the ocean. Starting off with whale hunting, followed by regular fishing, and then ending with harpoon fishing. This maximizes the total amount of income earned and reduces the amount of income lost from fish degradation. As we round this bend, you might notice the seagulls flying out in front of us. This is a coelacanth hotspot. These hotspots are actually quite common traveling between the Velia Coast and Luviano Island. Stopping at one of these, either in or out of port, is a really good way to get extra money. Because on a successful catch, you're guaranteed a coelacan. And these puppies are worth 250,000 silver apiece. And that's just base price without bargaining. Of course, you have to have your nodes set up properly in order to get your full cost. Otherwise, you're looking at a reduced price on any fish you take into port. I also recommend that you wait till the end of your fishing cycle so that you don't lose any income gained from this fish degrading. Because this one is a very important one to catch. And you might be wondering, how did you know that this is a coelacanth hotspot, and not just some grunt hotspot or something else? And the truth is, it's experience. Once you've been out on the ocean long enough, you start to get a knack for which hotspots are which. Now I'm going to speed up this segment, because I don't want to bore you with sitting here fishing for something. But as you can see, as I cast my pole in, the hotspot disappears. Don't worry, you'll still catch the fish, but it just means you're only going to get one. Also, if you're going to actively fish for this guy, make sure you hit the mini game perfectly and take your time, or else you're going to miss it. And there you have it, a 250,000 silver coelacanth. So technically, we're already at the spot I was going to show you. And this is where the real fishing begins. If you look at your map, you should be right between Luviano Island and the Balanos Coast. And you might be wondering, why this spot? Why not somewhere farther out? And my answer to that is, just wait and see. After equipping your harpoon, there's one rule you have to remember in order to start. After you cast your harpoon into the ocean, you have to make sure that one durability is lost or else you won't catch a fish. I'm not sure why this is, it could be a bug, but it's something I've learned that is 100% true for every time I go out. If your first durability doesn't decrease by one, you could probably be sitting there for quite a while before you realize you're not going to catch anything, and trust me, I've waited quite a while. So to remedy this, keep trying to move to different sides of the boat and look for different spots where your durability might break. As you can see, we've finally broken one durability, and now we can let the fishing begin. Finally, it's fish on. Once you hit spacebar, this minigame will begin. The red targeting reticle in the middle of the screen is what you'll be using to try to catch the fish. You'll have to continuously shoot the fish in order to catch it and bring its health down to zero. You have to make sure that the fish has turned red in order to shoot it. And pressing spacebar will fire your gun. Once you've taken a shot, there is a short cooldown on when you can shoot again. You can usually hear yourself reloading, and at the end of the reload, you'll be ready to fire again. 
Success! And now you'll be able to see which fish you've caught. This one is just a green grade skipjack. Only worth a few thousand silver. But that's just the beginning. Now on to the next catch. Notice once I hit the spacebar and cast my line out, I don't lose any durability on this shot. I will still be able to catch a fish, regardless of durability lost. This can only happen after you've fired your first shot and lost your first durability. Some sources I've looked into have said that you have to lose a durability every cast in order to catch a fish, but I've found that to not be true, as I've done experimentation on my own. Alright, another one on the hook. The next thing you need to look out for while you're doing this minigame is that you also have a time limit. You only get 60 seconds to fire at this fish until you lose it. There's also an ammo counter at the top right hand of the minigame screen. You only get 15 shots before you lose the fish as well. Luckily, it only takes 10 shots to kill every fish, so you have 5 chances to miss just in case you're worried. And just like that, we've caught ourselves a Siganid. Now time for another time lapse while I try to catch more fish to show you what else is available. This fish is why I come to this spot in particular, the mackerel tuna. At 117,000 silver per catch, and a fairly decent catch rate, this guy is what makes the entire trip worth it. If I can catch 10 of these per round, that's an easy mill or more, and that's without bargaining. Next is the Great Killer Whale. These guys are pretty rare to catch. I only catch them about half to a quarter of the time I do as a mackerel tuna, and they're actually worth less at base price. But since they're worth twice as much as a regular gold tier fish caught on a fishing pole, these guys are also worth it. There is one more whale that you can catch in this area. It's the sperm whale. However, they're very rare, and you're lucky to even catch one. They're the big papa of the fish community, and they usually run for around 350,000 silver and sometimes over 400,000 silver once you're done bargaining. And finally, the fruits of our labor. As you can see, I've caught quite a bit of mackerel tuna, and I've caught three of the killer whales, along with a whole bunch of other fish, and that coelacanth from earlier. I must warn you though, inventory space is everything. Fish don't stack, and so you'll need all the room you can get in your inventory to be able to catch as much as possible. Without proper preparation, you could end up just wasting a trip, instead of reaping the full benefits of what harpoon fishing has to offer. The final step of this incursion is to trade in your fish. I recommend starting with the Imperial Trader in order to get the highest price possible for the fish you've caught. Imperial trading is a lot different than regular trading, as there's a limit on to how many fish you can sell there. However, the payout at an Imperial Trader is a lot higher than what it would be at a normal trader. Notice how only the blue grade fish were sold out of this group. That means I'll have to trade the rest to the regular trader, which is found right here. Pardon the FPS drop, my computer decided it didn't want to work right after I got out of my boat. For this part of the trade, you want to bargain, bargain, bargain. This will ensure that you get the maximum amount of payout for every fish that you've caught. Unfortunately, it usually never works out on the first try and a lot of times you have to do it several times in order to succeed. As you can see here, I'm failing multiple times. On a successful bargain, it's time to sell all. 
and for this round I managed to pull in just over 3 million in fish alone. Had I done my full route with hunting and regular fishing, I could have easily pulled in over 8 mil. And there you have it, that's harpoon fishing. Now you don't have to go to the spot that I recommended, that's the place I just like the fish the most. There's a lot of other places with a lot of different fish you can catch, so I suggest trying different places and adventuring on your own.